Hey all, so I'm back with another one of these Spotlights with Context. Uh, I did playtest both of these characters extensively while they were in development. That's actually something that I've been asked several times recently, which is basically, hey, how much input did you have? And as far as, like, you know, what part did you contribute to the design? I, I don't think I can point to anything. Our process as a team is extremely collaborative. The design comes from the designer. The designer for Shuri, the designer for Atuma, is the one responsible for everything that comes out, right? Um, I was in playtests, I talked about the things that were working for me, things that could potentially work, but I just want to make clear that like, while it's a very collaborative process, and when my character eventually comes out, it will reflect a lot of input from other people, um, credit goes to the designer. So just I'm saying that because I keep getting that question, and I don't want uh, to take any credit from my colleagues just because I have a YouTube channel, is the reason I'm making a point there. But for both Shuri and Atuma, both of the ones this month, I think that they are unique enough that we kind of need to talk about them a slightly different way. And so I am going to be skipping the dev notes and the intro for both of these characters this month and just kind of talking about the abilities and giving the context that I can. I'm going to recommend for both of these that you do look up the spotlights and read the full dev notes because I think they're very insightful, but I think if I put them on the screen here it would end up kind of repeating some of what I'm saying and we'd be talking in different ways because I explain certain things a little bit differently than them and others. And it could end up just being a lot of text on the screen that you're worrying about while I'm also trying to talk to you. So this time I have taken my screenshots specifically to focus on the abilities and we'll go from there. Now, thankfully for both of them, the first ability in their kit is very instructive on how to look for the rest. So we're starting with Shuri, like I said, and one of the very first things is that her ability accuracy cannot be altered, and she is immune to shock and precision effects that aren't her own. So one thing that I do have to point to the dev notes for, as well as my own testing, is that you can put a concussion on Shuri which means, on the flip side, you can put a Neutralize on her. You can use Rintra, Tigra, and Wiccan against her and get the benefits of doing so, especially Tigra and Rintra, because they, their kits just work better when they apply Neutralize. However, those effects won't really do anything to Shuri. So she is different than someone like Mysterio in that sense. However, when it says that she is immune to shock and precision effects, that's a bit different. Those just don't happen. Which means that the precision from dexterity does not trigger, meaning that even though Shuri is not buff immune, she does have a built-in advantage against Mystic Dispersion or other, bush, other buff punishment nodes because she can dex freely while having the Dexterity Mastery on, without worrying about it triggering. So, that is one significant piece of utility she has immediately. And then, Shock Immunity is helpful. So additionally, Shuri's attacks are non-contact and deal energy damage instead of physical. And I need to underline this. All of her attacks. All of her basics, including her heavy, every single hit of all of her specials. She does not deal contact. Now, I want to, again, underline this primarily as unique. We have not done this with a character before. And it has significant advantages. It means she doesn't trigger Thorn's abilities that are based on contact, so Electro, Korg, Atuma, who also comes out this month, Anything that punishes making contact, she completely ignores. But on the flip side, it means that if you're fighting somebody who punishes non-contact attacks, like, say, Warlock or OG Daredevil, then you're going to have a much harder fight because you don't necessarily have contact abilities that you can try and pick and choose and only use those parts of your kit to still land. 
She is an all or nothing. And that is, again, both good and bad. Mostly good, but it does have some drawbacks. So just remember that she is unique in that. Additionally, because she does all energy damage, and then other than her actual hits, pretty much all she has is shock, she does not deal with energy resistance all that well. She does have the ability to crit, and we'll get to that later, but if you're dealing with somebody who kind of shrugs off energy damage, then don't pick Shuri, because she doesn't have any physical damage in her kit. Before we move on, I also want to further clarify the fact that her attacks are non-contact means that she cannot be parried or even re-parried by most characters. If you're used to doing the little parry twice trick against Iron Man Infinity War or Ebony Maw or Havoc to parry the first light, because that's normally a contact hit in those kinds of kits, that does not work on her. You need somebody with the explicit ability to parry non-contact hits, like Guardian or Angela, or you just need to find another way to get your openings. So, automatically, a fairly nasty defender with some interesting applications on offense. And then we can move into the rest of the kit. So, Kinetic Matrix, these Matrix charges, are what powers everything else. You gain these when you get hit, or by blocking, and you get five on a well-timed block. So, right away, she has some commonalities with Thing. Because she gets them both when hit or when blocking, she gets extras when she well-timed blocks, and she loses three when struck a certain way. You know, Thing loses three when he's hit with bleed, Shuri loses three when she's struck with true damage. Now, that refers to either the opponent having a true damage effect on them, or a true strike effect. Because remember that true strike is the combination of true accuracy and true damage. So either true strike or true damage, every single hit causes her to lose three charges. So somebody like Corvus, somebody like Odin, or Cersei, when she maintains that buff, just completely turns Shuri off. So she does have good counters. However, outside of that, like I said, think of her a little bit more like Thing. She's going to try and build up these charges, and when she gets to ten similar to when Thing gets to 15, she turns on a new ability that's going to be good both offensively and defensively. So defensively, Thing goes unstoppable. Shuri can throw a heavy attack to become untouchable, which causes all attacks to miss for five seconds. Offensively, Thing turns his Matrix charges into Furies. Shuri uses hers to power the entire rest of her kit. She can also use them to become more tanky, because additional Matrix charges past 10 turn into these armor up passives, which are pretty solid. I also want to point out, armor up passives by default are not removed by armor breaks. Iron Man Infinity War clouds these waters a bit, because his armor up passives specifically say they are removed by armor breaks, but that is not true for armor up passives in general. If you've ever fought Captain America Sam Wilson with an armor breaker, and there's been some kind of nullify in the fight, you may have run into this. So keep that in mind if you're trying to use somebody, I don't know, like Cosmic Ghost Rider, it's not that he won't have any chance of working, but his armor breaks are not going to get around hers. Additionally, these drop off one at a time. That's something that you're going to see in both characters this month. It has happened before. Howard the Duck has a similar mechanic. But what this means is that if you have 10 one-second armor ups on Shuri and they drop off one at a time, then after one second, it drops from 10 down to 9, then down to 8, then down to 7. So she will have one armor up for a full 10 seconds, and it will just come down that whole way. So if all you care about is having an armor up at all, then you can think about it as 10 seconds. Otherwise, you can think about the armor dropping off a little bit every second. Either way, just keep in mind that when something drops off one at a time, it's lasting significantly longer than it looks like. Another thing that the dev notes call out is that this 
also means that you can be very tanky against special attacks if you manage to parry any of the hits of a special attack because that's going to give you a bunch of armor ups in the middle of the special attack probably above your max so she can kind of play a little bit like guardian in that and it's very fun so her light and medium attacks consume one matrix charge each to inflict a shock debuff these are long shocks but they are very weak shocks and that's because this is not the goal this is always building up towards something else so remember that when you see these very weak numbers to start now shocks inflicted with critical hits instead become critical shock passives multiplying their energy damage by her critical damage rating so hawkeye works this way with bleeds hitmonkey works this way with bleeds but basically you want to be landing critical hits as you're converting these matrix charges because that's going to get you the much better critical shock passives these aren't going to trigger willpower they don't count as debuffs so they don't feed something like redouble determination and they just do way more damage because sherry has a pretty solid critical damage rating but shuri doesn't land critical hits on her own she's kind of like ghost in that way so what you want to do is turn on her abilities that allow you to land critical hits. So moving on, we get to the heavy attack. This will all kind of come together as we go. The heavy attack can consume 10 matrix charges to gain a 100% untouchable passive. So that's kind of a neat little both offensive and defensive trick. Means for five seconds, if you time this right and throw a heavy with 10 charges right as the opponent's throwing a special, Five seconds covers most specials, and you can get around some really gnarly stuff with this as long as your opponent can miss. So another reason to not use her against Daredevil. Um, but when that heavy lands, you're also going to refresh any active shock effects on the opponent. Remember, effects applies to both debuffs and passives. So any shock debuffs and any shock passives all get refreshed. And you're going to consume precision passives to convert shock debuffs into shock passives. So we'll get to where those precisions come from later, but remember you're always chasing the critical shock passives, and you can either have them be critical shock passives in the first place because you're converting matrix charges with critical hits, or you can apply the regular debuffs then gain the precisions and convert them later. Either is going to get you where you want to go, and often it will end up being better uh, for you to convert most of your shocks with your heavy. But for that to happen, you do have to have the precision, so let's keep moving. Her special attacks in general cannot be evaded. This is to make it so that she's not hopeless against somebody like Daredevil, <laughs> you don't have the like full Corvus versus Ebony Maw thing going on. It's just difficult, but if you can get to your special attacks, well then, there is some hope. Um, additionally, not having to worry about special attacks being evaded is just a nice little trick. It means that you can intercept with these against somebody like Nightcrawler. It's just one more nice little piece of utility she has to ignore certain challenges. So for the special one specifically, this is where you finally get those precision passives that fuel so many other things. You also get matrix charges. So if you just throw this special one out of nowhere without any ramp up or matrix charges, then you'll come out of it on the other side with you know, a certain number of matrix charges, a certain number of precision passives, and that's going to allow you to do a combo and inflict that many critical shock passives. So this does kind of fuel itself. You get both pieces from the special one. But the other thing is that if you've built up some of those normal shock debuffs on the opponent, then you get extra precisions with each hit. So if you have a bunch of shocks there, you're going to get a bunch of precisions, which then is going to allow you to mass convert with your heavy. 
like it says the precisions get consumed by light and medium hits to turn them into guaranteed critical hits. And so that's one more cool thing that Shuri has. She has guaranteed crits, so that means that Quicksilver can't necessarily get away from her with his annoying little evasion. It means that she has one tool to get through armor and resistances because critical hits are very good for that. There are a few other things that key off of critical hits, but in a lot of fights, what you really care about here is that the guaranteed critical hits are then a way to get critical shock passives, and often you will spend these precisions long before they become guaranteed critical hits to mass convert a bunch of shock debuffs into passives with your heavy. And I'm talking about what you often do, but I'm also going through these other possibilities because I think it can be very easy to look at Shuri and go, okay, this is a character that just builds up shock slowly over a long fight, and that's kind of all there is to it. And she is very good at that, but I really want you to go through her kit with the idea that there are a lot of neat little unique abilities in there that let her do other things. She's more flexible than she looks. She has that anti-evasion tech on the special attacks. She has no contact hits. She has guaranteed critical hits. All of those things come up. So keep that in mind going forward. So for the special two, this is going to immediately refresh all shock effects. Again, debuffs and passives. So refresh all of them. Pause them throughout the whole special two so you don't lose any of that time with the cool animation. And then your last hit inflicts more shock debuffs for every critical shock on the opponent. So if they have 50 critical shocks, boom, 50 debuffs. So this isn't quite a doubling because you then still have to convert those debuffs into uh, passives, but it sets up a doubling because if you can do this while you have a bunch of precisions, then you can go convert them all with your heavy. So this does set, take some time and it is not like the piece all by itself, but the special two is very powerful and will usually feel like an inflection point in the fight. Because remember that the primary feedback loop that you're going to be doing in a vanilla fight is going to be, you know, special one into special two into special one into special two, and you're just going to periodically heavy. I also want to remind you, because I know the Deep Dive talked about the Heavy primarily as a conversion engine. You get all of those passives and then you convert, right? You, you always want that mass convert. Remember that the Heavy also refreshes all shock effects. And I say that because I, in my playtesting, very often ended up throwing Heavies even when they would only convert a few shocks or maybe even wouldn't convert any shocks because what I was thinking about was more refreshing their duration and giving myself room, giving myself uh, flexibility in the rotation than about continuing to ramp her. The heavy serves both purposes. When combined with the special one, special two loop, it does ramp you, but it is also a maintenance tool that keeps you at that level. So remember both sides of it. And then outside of the special one, special two loop, you'll often be using, you can go straight to the special three. And this gives you 20 matrix charges, which remember, if you're at zero, will be 10 matrix charges and 10 armor ups. If you throw this when you're already at 10 matrix charges, so if you parry twice before this, then it's going to give you 20 armor ups. <laughs> so this can make you very, very tanky. It will help you with your ramp if you're still doing that. But just remember that 20 matrix charges is almost always some level of armor ups as well, which does feed into your overall tankiness. Additionally, because you're always going to come out of this attack with 10 Matrix Charges, you are going to be able to Heavy to go Untouchable afterwards. So this can be a nice little uh-oh button if you see your opponent um, starting to get to a really dangerous Special 2 or something that you're not going to have an answer for. You can whack him with the Special 3, give yourself some armor, and then go Untouchable at the right moment for some extra safety. 
Additionally, once you are ramped and you have some shock and critical shock effects on the opponent, just deal a big old burst of damage for each one. Because this number right here, this 700, these spotlights tend to be put together for a rank 5, um, 65, 5-star five champion. So a rank 4, 6-star is going to do more. This damage gets really, really solid. Especially because, remember, if you have all those shocks on the opponent, they are also ticking away for damage. Shuri's damage ceiling is really, really high. We did a lot of our internal playtesting in Abyss or Labyrinth to make sure that she could actually start to ramp because <laughs> she is dangerous. And then the SIG ability just immediately can block unblockable special attacks. So this is really nice against an awful lot of scary nodes and defenders, like maybe that Apocalypse on node 28, uh, Path 6, Section 2 in Alliance War, where people often place him because he will start with 3 prowess and immediately go unblockable on all specials. Shuri doesn't have to worry about that, because she can block it, as long as you have Sig 1. And then she also gets some perfect block chance for each personal armor up passive. So I made the comparison to Guardian earlier, where if you get good at parrying the opponent's specials, you can get more of these armor up passives. Now not only does that make you tankier in general, it's also giving you perfect block chance. So, like Guardian, if you get good at this, you can pretty quickly get to the point where you're just not worried about special attacks. And since you don't have to worry about the unblockable side of them, this just makes Shuri really tanky if you're playing her well. It's very, very fun. So then let's talk about the synergies. Really solid one with the two Black Panthers, just more health, shock and bleeds get better. Not like amazing for any of them, but just really solid. The one with Namor, all of them start with these precision passives that turn into guaranteed critical hits. So this is mostly good for Shuri because it lets her start the critical shock ramp up right away. It's not a huge deal for Atuma and Namor, but it does give them a little bit more damage right out of the gate, and that can be nice. Q Branch is awesome. I mean, Beast is not very noteworthy at the moment, but Infamous Iron Man and Mr. Fantastic are both very good characters who have really solid levels of tankiness and control. And so giving them the ability to just ignore a special one or two once during the fight is really good. This is an awesome uh, synergy. And of course, it works on Shuri as well, who is also tanky and controlling and can use a failsafe. Women in STEM, I mean, the name is just amazing, um, but also attack rating and block proficiency for all of the for all of them, this is great. Um, all four of these characters don't really have much in the way of attack increases in their kit. Wasp does more damage on her special three based on combo, but for her special two, for her guaranteed crits, for Jane's shocks, for Invisible Woman's damage per debuff on the opponent, for Shuri's shocks, most of that stuff is scaling off of critical damage and just base attack. So giving them extra attack is going to have a real effect, especially for a synergy that comes on a three star. So that's already very good. And then a lot of these characters are a little bit on the fragile side. So extra block proficiency for all of them is going to make all of them that much better. This synergy with Misty, 20% extra potency on Shuri's shocks and pausing them during the opponent's special so that you get that much easier maintenance is really, really good. I think it is a little bit less important for Misty, especially the potency, because she's often using um, that cold snap time to build up frostbites and then detonate them. But pausing it during the opponent's special attacks is going to give her more time to do that, and so it's not bad for her either. And then this one with Nebula, this one kind of reads the most nuts, I think, because it's like, whoa, Nebula didn't need more shock damage. And once you get to play Shuri for a while, you're probably going to say, whoa, Shuri didn't need more shock damage. And you'd be right on both. But this one isn't... I don't think it's problematic. <laughs> because it's basically just a 20% boost to their shocks. So 
you're not going to be taking them into fights that you wouldn't otherwise win for the most part, but it takes both of these incredible shock damage characters and just turns them up by about 20%, and that is obviously very good. And so that's Shuri. I know this one is kind of long, but we kind of had to talk about the odd consequences of some of her abilities. I've mentioned a couple things that Shuri specifically answers, like thorns, unblockable specials in general, but I don't think she has many immediate applications in Alliance War or like Battlegrounds Defenders that you really need a Shuri for, but her kit is unique. I keep saying that because it's very different than most uh, characters we've seen in this game before. She has all those little all-in abilities that are just going to make her good for a bunch of things going forward. Like, her floor is solid Battlegrounds Defender who will occasionally handle fights that you didn't have any other answer for. And I think she just goes up from there, especially because she does so well against large health pools She's so tanky if you're if you get good at her. She's just really, really solid. So I think it's going to be tempting to underrate her or to dismiss her as like, OK, well, that's cool in Abyss, but why do I care? But just try and keep in mind the specific weird abilities she has and think about how they would make specific fights better, because I think that's where her value lies. She's just going to be weird in exactly the right way you want on a regular basis, if that makes sense. And I hope you can tell that I am excited about her. I'm, like I said, already kind of worried that people are going to underrate her just because some of these abilities don't have super obvious immediate um, applications. And it's really easy to write her off as just a long damage or as a long fight damage machine. But I think there's a lot more than that there. And the combination of guaranteed critical hits, of all non-contact hits, of her unique method of um, going untouchable, of her unique kind of tankiness, there's a really strong character here if you master her ins and outs. And then as you are leveraging these cool abilities, the fact that her damage is just going to keep going up and up and up might almost feel more like a bonus than the main event. So, hope you all get to try out Shuri soon. Let me know in the comments uh, what you're thinking about this one. And if you haven't already uh, watched the Atuma one, head over and check that out. Until next time, thanks so much for watching, and take care.